All right, I, I felt from today that I had quite a few questions on this assignment about the confounding versus lurking variables. Okay, so let's take a look at those. So first I had these pictures here. Okay, so what we learned was that, in fact, let me get my little highlighter down here. So what we learned, so confounding variables um, are when, generally happen in an experiment. You have a situation where you're, you're not controlling everything you should. Okay, you had two things happening upon the subject, and then you cannot tell which of those two things is the explanatory variable creating that response. Okay, and so that is shown here with this third picture because suppose that, you know, like we were, we intended on whatever this X explanatory variable was to be creating that, seeing if it re creates that response, okay? But we didn't control everything we had, and we had something else also acting on the um, subject, creating a response. So then ultimately, we can't tell, did X or Z create that response in Y? We don't know. Confounding variables cloud the issue. You can't claim a cause. All right, next are lurking variable. So lurking variables make it look like there's a link. So we, I mean, it to us, it looks like X is affecting Y. It looks like the firemen, more firemen to the fire, the more damage, okay? But there's this other also, uh, frequently unforeseen topic or other variable. So as the size of the fire, more firemen come, more damage is done. So something else actually connected those two together, making them look like they were linked when they really, that fireman, amount of firemen to the fire was not the cause of that amount of damage. All right. Oh, yeah. And then this one here, simple, straightforward causation, had it controlled everything just attributed to that one variable. So we were good. All right, here we go. So here we had this fifth grade librarian helper who noticed that the taller students had higher reading levels. Okay, so he thought, oh, that must mean that if you are taller, you have higher reading levels. Well, what happened was he, yeah, so he thinks height is the cause of the higher reading level. And of course, the reading level is that response we are measuring. Okay, now, but let's think about it. You know, there's something else there because obviously it's not the fact that you are a taller person that is the cause of you reading better. Okay. Well, that would have to do with your age. That's that other contributing factor. Higher, older students, you know, your age, older students get taller, older students have a higher reading level. So age is contributing to both of those other variables, making them look linked when they are not. Height is not causing increased reading level. Okay, here's this next one. So here, uh, this person noticed that the more ice cream um, that they had, let's see, that as he ordered more ice cream, then there was an increase in drownings, okay? So he got worried. He's like, ah, let's not sell the ice cream because I'm worried for these people. So he was thinking that the ice cream was causing the death, increase in the deaths by drowning. So he thinks increase in ice cream sales, increase of death by drowning, but there's something else that's contributing to it, and that is that temperature outside, which more people are swimming. So with that temperature outside is making ice cream sales go up. See, what other thing is in making both of those things increase? Temperature makes ice cream sales go up. Temperature makes more people swim, and so they have a higher frequency of deaths by drowning. Okay, so temperature is that lurking variable, making it look like there's a link. 
All right, here we go. I like this one, this little cartoon here. He says, I wish they didn't turn on that seatbelt sign. It gets so bumpy. Okay, so he thinks that that seatbelt sign is causing the bumpiness. And that's not the case. There's air turbulence. Air turbulence is causing them to turn on the seatbelt sign, the pilot. Air turbulence is causing there to be more bumpiness. So there is a third unforeseen item making those two things both happen, making it look like there's a link. All right, now I think, what does this say, a discussion? So I guess, uh, I can't remember if I put this in your, um, in your canvas as a discussion or what's going on here. Okay. Oh, this is an interesting one. Oh, yeah, I'm really interested to see how this plays out. OK, you know, here we are, 2020, 2021 school year, definitely unique. So that's just really going to be interesting to see what happens with our whole online classroom thing versus, uh, you know, the in-person classroom. All right, because here's what happened. I'm going to tell you that my test scores that I had um you know the test scores are the response so are we going to see that people who were online then they had higher test scores on say star ap sat so it's kind of interesting because right here at the beginning of the year i have 13 remote only learners and man they are just getting everything turned in. They are just spot on on all of their little quizzes and tests that they are doing. They are getting it. They are thriving in that online environment. Well, is it the online that's going to be causing them to get better test scores? Okay. Or is there something else? You know, are they just generally better, strong students? OK, are just those general strong students going to, you know, they they are able to thrive in that online environment. And therefore, they are also, of course, naturally going to do better on test scores. OK, so lots of different discussion here. I don't know if that connection is being made. I guarantee you there's going to be lots of studies about the education uh, issues that have happened during this very interesting time. OK, moving on. Number six. Uh, let's see. I think this wasn't a multiple choice, but asking some different things about the smoking habits of those um, the smoking habits of the two workers are similar, but the coal miners generally exercise less than the farm workers. OK, so um, we would just have an observational study because we're just observing what happens. We didn't like say, oh, you have to go do this. Uh, go in, be a coal miner, and oh, you have to go be a farm worker, okay? Just observing already existing conditions. So type of job we're thinking is explaining it. Your response is your lung capacity, okay? But something else is perhaps contributing to that lung cancer rather than your type of job, okay? So we don't want to say, oh, coal miners have less lung capacity because of their environment, we can say, you know what, amount of exercise, those coal miners aren't doing as much exercise as the farm workers, and so therefore those coal miners don't have that lung capacity from that exercise experience, okay? So we can have that, that third unforeseen thing making it look like there's a link. All right, here, I have a question mark over there, so I don't know what that's referencing. Let's see what's going on. So this was one where we had an experiment. Um, the treatments are drinking more water and what is that con the drinking more water being high. Oh, yeah, this is an interesting one. Oh, yeah, the study thinks that people having more fluid is going to stave off the flu. So I wonder if they think that's going to happen with COVID. Well, what happens is 
you know, it's not necessarily that the amount of water is making people get flu at a less of a rate, you know, a lower rate. Well, because what happens when you go to the bathroom? You know, if you're going to the bathroom a bunch because you're drinking a lot of water, then you're washing your hands more often. So it's not necessarily you flushing the flu virus out of your system. Mm -mm. It's you go drink a lot of fluids, so you're going to the bathroom and washing your hands more frequently. So therefore, you're exposing, you know, touching your face because you've washed your hands more. And so you've not been carrying that virus around so much and exposing your um, mucous membranes to it. Okay, interesting. All right, let's take a look at what we got here. This number eight, I think it just got to some uh, multiple choice stuff. And we will be talking about what statistically significance is meaning. So if a statistically significant difference in that blood pressure change at the end of the year was found, so statistically difference, statistically significant means it wasn't just eh, close. It wasn't happening just because of, you know, the randomization of things and just a little bit different. No, it's saying that it was a big difference and that it had to be caused and attributed to that particular one variable that was different. Okay. So therefore it can be concluded that that activity caused that. If we have an experiment and see we have random assignment to those treatment groups. So we have a controlled experiment. So then because of that, we have that right to claim cause and effect. And if you have a significant difference, and we'll talk about that language um, more later this week, then you can do cause and effect and say that that did that. Okay, I think that was it. All right, there was your lurking variables assignment that you guys may have had some questions on. I hope that that helped.